Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming to the Comedy Store. You ready for a fucking good night? Uh, all right, please welcome John Crookshank. <laughs> Very good, very good, thank you. <laughs> Have a look. You never saw so many fucking hats at a comedy show. You know what I mean? It's fucking only me. Every kind of fucking hat. Um, that, <laughs> thanks all the same. <laughs> I didn't, I had the ice, it's already dripping, but I was having it, you know? I was, yeah. Just wait. Um, starts always a bit slow. Um, Thanks for being here. You're here now. You gotta fucking watch it. Um, <laughs> I don't know, like, I don't know what, I don't know what you expect, you know, like, it's not a big revelation this evening. It's just a show. You know, I'm not back there listening to Eminem and shit, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's not eight mile. Uh, it's 50 metres, you know? Just a, <laughs> Just the length of the pool, just get wet and get out, you know? <laughs> That's all I'm, all I'm doing. Hold on, I'm sorry. You're not, you're not supposed to eat. But um, thanks for coming out to the show. It's hard to imagine this shit, you know? Like, you've got to start, think about it from my perspective. Everyone's just fucking here. Like, <laughs> I can't believe, you know, like, well, it's the Rolling Stones. What's the Rolling Stones? It's like, what is it? You can't always get what you want, but if you try sometimes, you, you might just get what you need. But sometimes you don't even try and you get what you want. <laughs> it's fucking heaps better, right? Like, it's, it's so much better. Like, that's, you know, you're trying and you only get what you need. Like, and you don't want what you need. But don't try and here we are. Like... <laughs> That's how I don't know how to start the show, like, because this was just back in, oh, it feels like 20 years ago, in May, it was in a shipping container, and they had, like, half the sh chairs turn around the other way, you know? And now we're here. It's fucking quite an extraordinary position to be in. Um, you know, for me, that's what I think. Um, and I'm, you're here to hear what I think. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? And uh, oh, there's so much administration to do at the start in a big venue. You know what I mean? If there's a fire, we're fucked. But uh, <laughs> for, further to that, like, if you need a drink, they've got the things on the table and there's a button. And you push the button and I don't know what happens. It sends an email or some shit. Like, I don't know about computers. Like, my thumb's fucked. Like, I'm not evolving. You know, like, you use the phone. Nobody talks about it. My thumb is fucking gone. Like, kids, they're going to have thumbs, they're going to be able to use all this shit. Me, I'm regressing, you know? The thumb is a sign of evolution, the, oppos the opposable thumb. It's what separates us from the monkeys, you know? Even to the, you know, to the effect of the hitchhiker. They stick their thumb out like that, like, yep, I want to move forward, right? <laughs> <laughs> you better laugh at the only new joke I wrote for this show, so... <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> it's good, it went all right. Oh man, but these things, um, oh man, these uh, performances don't just happen. It doesn't just, you know, just show up here like it's already happened, you know? Got to, there's a lot of work. Emails, you got to email them. Send emails. Like I said, it's all computers now. It's all changed. And they ask you questions like, how much? For your show, and it's like, man, I'm a fucking artist. How dare you, like... 20 bucks, right? <laughs> I do it for $20. So I think that's reasonable. Do some promotions. People came before, we'll be kind to them. But um, here you all are. And this is it. This is the start. This is a performance. Um, what do you want to know? This is a... We're, oh, no, also, this is what I want to say. Oh, everyone's pretty, pretty well behaved, so that's not a problem. But we are... Uh, While well, there is no pressure or whatever, we are recording tonight in case something good happens. So... <laughs> Just be on your best behaviour. If, you, if you're sitting there and you've, you know, people are you know, just taking some shit trips to see or whatever and you want to, you know what I mean? You want to fucking stare and say words that don't mean anything. Fuck off, Stisky. Like, <laughs> you know, just we've got the crew in filming and let's just, 
not have to fucking worry about any of that, <laughs> any of that stuff tonight as we get on. Um, man, what can I tell you? Oh, man, I'm so tired. Um, <laughs> but like I used, oh man, early in the year I was so tired and I, all I could do in the weekend in the yard, just lie on the ground and, and look, at, look up. And I, I, live under the, I live under the plains, like, um, you know, and as much as we all do, like... <laughs> <laughs> wait, um, I'm quite, like, I could see them, and you could read it all, all the stuff. And there's, you look at these planes come in for a few hours of a day, and there's so many brands. They've got new brands now. Like, it's not just Qantas and Ansetton anymore, right? <laughs> they've got... There's new brands. There's new brands of plane flying all, almost every day I'd see a new one. And my favourite one, this is my favourite one that I'd see, FedEx. Does anyone know this, FedEx? They're the mail in America, but they're flying here and they've got their own planes. <laughs> do, you, <laughs> do you know what I mean? And you can't get on them, like they're not on Webjet. Like I tried, <laughs> so, that's a big, that was a big day for the thumb, right? Trying to. <laughs> I don't have a computer like a normal computer. I just got the phone or whatever. But, but FedEx, yeah, from America, and they got they got they got their own planes, but you can't get on them as a human. They they just got mail on them, right? But they have still got Windows, <laughs> right? Out of respect. <laughs> um, oh man, had some dinner. Tonight's everyone had dinner? Some people have had, it's good, it's good, you gotta have dinner. Um, of a night, that's the sort of comedy I do, like you gotta have dinner, <laughs> but like, say your mum or whatever, but I just had pretty low key calamari pack from the fish shop, right? And pack, as it turns out, just means chips. <laughs> it's just the extra stuff that comes with a calamari, right? But then there's extra, you know, if they're gonna say pack, I don't know if that includes the cardboard and paper and shit too. <laughs> or if it's just the edible stuff that you get with it. But then why not put lemon? You know, I don't know. I just had the calamari pack. Uh, and I had a drink, Solo. Soft drink. And I love Solo. It's a good drink. Is anyone, everyone in obviously knows Solo? Absolutely. It's a pretty good one. The only thing I don't like about Solo is the advertising. It's a bit, it's a bit, I don't know. I don't like it. Like, Solo got advertising. This is, I've seen this, saw this one, right? They got it once I saw this big, big billboard. Okay, and this is what it said. It said, what did it say? Solo, right? <laughs> so, no, of course. <laughs> you all need to wait. But it says, Solo, the thirst crusher. That's right. And then it had a picture of this big, like, real healthy guy in, like, sports clothes. Just emptying a barrel of it <laughs> into his mouth, like this, an upturned barrel, right? I don't know where it was coming out of, but he had to drill a hole in the top, I think. But you know, you see that, you just think, well, if you're if you're a healthy adult male, and it's taken you, you know, over what, one fifteenth of a barrel of soft drink, right, to crush your thirst. <laughs> then you've probably got sugar diabetes, <laughs> right? And you've probably got it from drinking barrels full of soft drink. <laughs> but then, if you think that's, right, if you, if you think anything about that, think about their second one I saw. They, they've got a whole series now, Solo. This is outrageous. This is how outrageous they're prepared to put it on the line. Seeing this one, it says, this is what it said. It said, Solo, the original thirst crusher. <laughs> I think water, <laughs> might have something to say about that. I think they're forgetting a lot of history. The original thirst crusher. You know, you're sitting in the cave. Fuck, I'm thirsty. Oh, have a solo. The original beverage. How dare they? How dare they come in our, in our place? But other than that, people like people are off. I, I got to drink water now, but um, like, just to you know, people are off soft drink altogether. They think it's bad, and like I drink it all the time, and people talk to me about it, and it's normally like healthy people, like overly, and they'd be like, "Oh, what are you drinking? 
Like you're drinking soft drink. You know, like you, you're going to die. <laughs> you must hate yourself, you know? You're just sitting around drinking soft drink. But what it, like, soft drink, it's just, it's got bubbles in it. What's the bubbles? Air. Air's life. It's more life. <laughs> I'm enjoying life, you know what I mean? Like, they're drinking juice. I looked juice up on Google.com. No oxygen. <laughs> right? These people drinking juice are fucking suffocating themselves. <laughs> trying to tell me how to live my life. Like, you know what I mean? I'm having, I'm having a soft drink. It's got water, air, right? I'm having a buffet of elements. <laughs> You can't get more elements in a drink. You can't put fire in there, but... Or earth. But other than that, those, you know, they're separate. They're separate to the whole thing. Um, my favourite drink, as uh, you may, may or may not know, is the frozen margarita. That's my favourite. Not the pizza. Um, that's a different thing, but, like, frozen margarita is my favourite, but you can't always... You can't always get them around town, like they're quite labour intensive and a lot of venues don't want to commit to it. The frozen part is too much work. So you can't get it. The fuck did I say about calling out? Um, no. <laughs> no, but you can't you can't you can't always get the you can't always get the frozen margarita. So tonight, before my performance, do you know what I had to do, right? I had to get a shot of tequila, right? And have a calippo. <laughs> That's how you do it, right? I'm the frozen margarita. <laughs> it's the same autopsy, right? If I die tonight, they have a look, oh, I froze a margarita. It got him in the end, right? Sugar diabetes. Um, but, and everyone like Clippo, everyone knows about Clippo here, Sydney, Australia, the fucking home. <laughs> Of the Calippo, I'd say that right on, we're right on the precipice. Summer's about to fucking start. I'm starting it, that's what I'm saying, right? <laughs> that's where it starts now, early, right? Um, but Calippo, does anyone know who invented it? It's us, human beings. <laughs> Our species invented the Calippo. Did you know that? A lot of people have a lot of ill will towards the human race, right? But it's like, mate, why don't you sit down, okay, have a Calippo. How are ya? <laughs> I'm doing a lot better, thank you. Like... Because nature can't do it. Nature can't make the calippo. It cannot reproduce, and I've seen nature try. Right, I'm around, I've been to Antarctica, and I've seen the icicles coming off the roofs of the caves. Okay, same shape as a calippo. Shit flavour. <laughs> right, no rapper, like, I haven't even... Haven't even tried. Um, haven't even tried. And like, it's for shape, the Calippo, it's, I'd call it conical, which means cone shaped in, in geometry. So it's made by humans and it's, it's conical, it's cone shaped. And the human beings, you know, we make the best cone shaped food there is. Don't we? It's true. Think about it. Think about the other stuff we got, right? Like the Cornetto ice cream. Ooh, yes, please. <laughs> think about this for a minute. Think about this. Think about the way you eat a human-made cone-shaped food, right? Where do you start? At the top, don't you? The big surface area. And you have to work your way down to the bottom, yeah? And what's at the bottom of a Calippo there, that of Cornetto? Chocolate, exactly right. A bit of a treat, <laughs> right? A surprise from humanity to say, thanks for taking part. <laughs> Right, because think about cone-shaped foods made by nature, right? It's the opposite. It's the exact opposite, like a carrot. <laughs> Where do you start having that at the bottom? Don't you? Then you have to work your way up to the top, right? Jaw, tired as fuck. <laughs> and say, say you think to yourself, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do the whole thing. What's the treat at the end? A gross bit of green leaf. <laughs> so all the time people want to chat about nature. Oh, nature, I love nature, nature's the best. But, you know, when it comes to cone-shaped foods, human beings. <laughs> Our species. Um, that's what I think about everything I just said. Um, 
But it's, it is, it is, uh, it is ice cream, ice cream season, I suppose. Like, and there's a lot of ice cream going round. Um, <laughs> well, there is. There's all kinds. I don't know. You probably notice. Like, and a lot of people want to talk about ice cream, and um, <laughs> and there's all sorts. If you, if you're out there looking for it, it's there. <laughs> and if you are, if you have been looking for it, you might. This is what you might have noticed, right? There's a there's something going on with ice cream where like the price of ice cream is directly proportional to the specificity of the location given in the name of the brand of ice cream, right? I'll give you, this is what I mean, this is what I mean by that, right? So, say you're in the supermarket, right? Walking around the supermarket and you go, and you go to the freezer, right? And there'll be corn and, and shit like that in there. <laughs> That's the wrong freezer, right? <laughs> There's another one on the other side. For some reason, right? It's like the world. It's got the North Pole and the South Pole, I suppose, in the supermarket. And um, so you go, you know, you find the ice cream there and you look and there's all the, there's all the stuff there. And you, you'll see one there. It might be a bit fogged up on the glass. You have to rub it down. Indiana Jones, you know? What's, what's in here? And you'll see one. You'll see one there and it'll be like, it'll be 383 mils. Right? And that's a new volume. <laughs> we haven't seen that volume before. <laughs> right? In ice cream. Normally you've got, you got the one litre, the two litre, or the four litre in poorer areas. Right? <laughs> but this thing is 383 mils. Right? And it'll be $26. <laughs> and it'll be called like Katapuku Road. Right, from the North Island of New Zealand. Right, and you know exactly where it's made, and that's the most expensive one. Okay? And then you've got the cheaper stuff. Streets. <laughs> Could be anywhere, right? <laughs> Fuck. Dirt. Um, that's dirt, that. And streets. And then, uh, while I'm on it, while I'm on ice cream, um, I consider it like the only one I'm, I like them all, but the one I do take a little bit of umbrage with is the splice. Um, I don't know if anyone here likes the splice. A lot of people I'll do this and I'll come, oh, I actually like the splice. It's, it's not about that. Um, <laughs> all right, it's about morality. Um, <laughs> and if you're here and you don't know what a splice is, right, what it is, it's a cold treat. <laughs> okay. and. It, it's got ice block on the outside, right, and ice cream on the inside. And it's for people who don't know what they want in life. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got to go into the wording of it, the name, splice. Look that up. What does that mean? Mixing two things, coalescing two things into one thing. Right? And splice, it doesn't do that. Right? The ice block and the ice cream, just next to each other. <laughs> You've got to do the work, <laughs> right? You're the splice. <laughs> Call the union, right? That's why they're getting... That's why they got boycotted. That's why they got boycotted, right? <laughs> the ice block and the ice cream, they're just next to each other. Do you know what it, this is what it, you know what it should be called, right? Adjacent. <laughs> but that doesn't look very good with the palm trees and all that shit, but that's just the way life is. Like, I can't... You know, you can't, there's no way around it. Um, oh, man. I consider it a personal atrocity that um, the Lion King animated feature didn't have at least one scene with the Paddle Pop lion in it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, there's only so many animated lions. Like, he's clearly part of the family. <laughs> Been left out of the film completely, right? He decided he don't want to stay in the jungle. He wanted to come to the city and sell ice cream. His choice should be respected. <laughs> By Disney, right? Like, I know he's got his own personal issues with the Paddle Pop line, um, and that's, you can see that in the way he's dressed. Because he wears a safari suit. <laughs> right? He's either hiding for himself or trying to find himself. <laughs> and either of those can be problematic. Um, 
So yeah, that's that's something I think about um, <laughs> regularly. Uh, <laughs> you have to, because no one else is. <laughs> it's my fucking job. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh man, this is going. It's, oh, it's, we're going. Um, <laughs> We're going well. I didn't know, like I've been, uh, what have I been up to? I've been unwell, I'm still, still getting out of it. Like, uh, this is what happened. I had tonsillitis, right? And uh, has anyone ever had tonsillitis before? Yeah, it's popular, right? <laughs> it's quite, it's popular. And if you've had it before, tonsillitis, you know, like you can't just, you gotta take medication for it, it's quite serious. Antibiotics, right, however you say it. And if you've ever had to take antibiotics before, <laughs> right, you'll know you can't just walk around taking them. No. There's rules. And you've got to follow the rules, right? And this, this is the rules. This is the rules of the antibiotics that I'm on, right? So you've got to take one tablet every six hours, okay? But it's got to be on an empty stomach. So you can't have eaten up to two hours before you have it, right? Or up to half an hour after you've had it. When the fuck do you have it? <laughs> do you know, like, I still haven't taken it yet. You know, like, if you get up at eight in the morning, does sleep count? Like, who, who got into, oh, you know, like, I don't know. Has anyone here, oh, what about this? <laughs> Has anyone here ever seen a film, Keanu Reeves film called The Matrix? <laughs> right, in The Matrix, this is what happens, Keanu Reeves, he figures out that the whole world is maths, <laughs> right, and you've got to dodge everything. <laughs> That's what it's like on antibiotics. You know what I mean? I'm up here, I've got pills coming at me, clocks, food, like... <laughs> you know, like, ooh. Oh, man. It's, it's not easy, I tell you that. Um, oh, man. Oh, man, I don't know. I just don't know. Um, the, uh, oh, is anyone here? Speaking about phones and all that shit, we've had, I had, you know, I've got the Apple phone. I'm sure everyone's got an Apple phone or similar. And these people, they, have, they think they can run the world, you know? Like to the, to the point where they can just, they have weather on there and you, Apple weather on the phone and you've got to have it. <laughs> if you've got an Apple, like you can't delete the app, their weather, you have to have it. You can shake it around a bit if you want, but and get it wiggling. <laughs> you know? Oh, this, I never move. This, that's what I have to do, move around. Some fucking laughs, to wiggle around. But Apple weather, like this, wiggling around. That's you like that, don't you? <laughs> Trips to see. But it's wiggling around. But you can't get rid of the weather. It's like if you worked in an office and you had, you, every day you had to go and see some guy and, he, you know, it's, and yeah, he had to tell you the weather. Tim Bailey knocks on the door. Hey, mate, do you mind if I... Yeah, he's already inside. <laughs> right? On the couch next to your missus, telling you the weather. Like... And they've got no... They just tell you... I've, seen, I've had this heaps, like... They have percentage chance of rain. And yesterday it was 100 and, you know, fair play. But... <laughs> But it was a hundred all day and I screenshot it fucking every day. And I'm ready to go to court, right? I'll take them, mate. The whole of Cupertino, where they all live. But then sometimes, as a percentage chance of rain, they put zero. I've had that zero and I go, oh, sweet. I'll go for a bike ride. Sure enough, fucking rains. And where are they? Cupertino. I can't, it's, it's an atrocity. It's again, it's, it's paddle pop line, it's morality. Like, <laughs> how dare they tell me, like, it's not gonna rain. If they're sincere, right? If they, if they honestly don't think it's gonna rain, why don't they put a picture of the CEO of Apple's mattress 
outside. <laughs> okay, put a bit of skin in the game. Take it outside. Take your mattress outside, mate. Move. Move. Oh, it's not going to rain. You could move today. You could take it out there and brush it off. Leave it. Someone comes around, you go, let's go for a drink. Come back later. Put it inside, you know, whenever. <laughs> but they don't. Because they don't think like me. If I start making phones, they'll be fucking good. It's just a further, further thought that I've had. Because I ride, like, I don't mind riding a bike around. I don't know if anyone rides bikes around. Like, I don't wear the Lycra and all that, but push bike, let's go. Like, you got to do something. <laughs> but in Sydney, people talk about Sydney being a real, like, inhibited place. And when it comes to bikes, bikes no inception. There's too many rules, and I find them a bit strict and very hypocritical, right? And because uh, if you got, to, if you're riding a bike around, right, you got to have, obviously, you got to wear a helmet, which is fine. I don't want any of this getting out, right? <laughs> Okay. First of all, and you, you know, another thing is, you gotta, it's, it's compulsory, you've got to have lights on your bike, but that's fair too. Sure enough, day turns into night. Okay, never had that not happen. That happens every time. But the one that, the one that I don't like is that you've got to have a bell. Ding, a working bell on your bike. Compulsory, $180 fine. Right? If you don't have a... As some, some sort of duty of care thing to pedestrians, okay? But as a pedestrian, it's not against the law to be walking around listening to headphones, okay? Or be deaf. <laughs> so how can they put it on you? It's not always appropriate. You know what I mean? Like, what if they gave you a fine for riding your bike with no bell through a deaf school? <laughs> It'd be unheard of. <laughs> it's a bit stupid, isn't it? But, but that's not having a go. That's just like, you know, I just let me ride. Like, I'm just trying to ride. I'll, if I'm going to hit someone, I'll tell them. I can make up my own mind um, about hitting people. Oh, man. Here we go. All right, this is going quite well. Um, I'd say, based on a bit better than what my dreams were, you know, like, I was getting no laughs in the dreams. <laughs> well, that's how you have, that's why you, that's how you, you know, that's how you, I don't know, keeps you going. Um, yeah, so that's, that's good. I forgot the bit that I already just read. It's like when you check the time. Oh yeah, this is what I'm going to say. <laughs> you don't know, because you don't know what's going to happen in life. Obviously, I had to go to, where did I have to go the other day? Yesterday. I had to drive, I had to go to this place called, I had to go to Westfield, Hurstville. Right, and that's, this is, this is not an indemnity on the Hurstville area, but it's just, I was going out of my way. I was going further than I had to go. I had to go past other shopping centres. So I needed, a, I had to get a rare item. Right. <laughs> I had to get a repair kit for an inflatable backyard pool, right? <laughs> And that's just how it is, okay? <laughs> so I drive down there, I'm at Westfield Hurstville, right? Fucking took ages. Par I'm parked in the car park. I'm going into the centre. You know how you go through a tunnel? So you go, I'm going through this tunnel into the centre and there's two men walking past me and they're having a conversation. And I, I overhear them. And one of them, one of them just says to the other, he goes, he goes, mate, it's human fucking nature, all right? I was like, oh, I'll look out. You know, that's good. They're getting into the nitty gritty down here at Westfield Hurstville. <laughs> but, you know, then I got into the centre and human nature were performing <laughs> in the food court. <laughs> so, <laughs> you don't know what's going to happen. Um, <laughs> And yeah, now, now I'm here, uh, I'm just here doing, doing stand-up. Um, and uh, it's, it's great, it's going, I love it. Um, and, but I'm not like, I'd say this, I'm not like the other comedians, you know, like, I'm not saying I'm better or whatever, but like, I just mean like, I'm not like, oh, show time. Like, it's t time to be funny or whatever. Like, comedy's just on. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? It's just, it's just all the time. We're just walking around. Like, I know it's, it sounds a bit arrogant, and I stop short of saying I'm always on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because there's no off. Like, it's just comedy's happening all the time. Um, well, I can prove it. I'll prove it. Like, I tell you, yes, this is yesterday again. I was doing my after work routine uh, that I do every day after work because I work as an electrician in the city, right? And I did when I wrote it, but... <laughs> I... <laughs> so I was doing my after work routine uh, and every day I ride my bike home from work, right? And I like to stop at a popular inner city bakery there and just get myself a little, a little pie and a chocolate milk after work, <laughs> you know? And just sort of sit there, sit there on my own and have that and just think, fuck this. <laughs> right, just the after work routine. I don't know what you guys do. That's what I like to do, right? <laughs> now, what you've got to understand is I know the guy who works at the pie shop, right? but I already knew him. I knew him socially from outside of the pie shop. Okay, but now this guy's working in the pie shop, so we're focusing on the pastry retail <laughs> side of our relationship. So I go in there, I go in there yesterday, right, and I said, and he sees me come in and, and he starts, he reaches for my normal pie that I get, okay, and the ceramic plate. <clears throat> and I just say to him, I said, Brian, hold on. I said, hold on a second, mate. I said, I can't actually have the pie in here this afternoon. And he goes to me, he goes, what do you mean? You can't have the pie in here this afternoon. He goes, are you busy? And I said, not so busy that I can't stop for a pie, <laughs> but too busy to have it here. <laughs> right? I had to go to Westfield, Hurstville. Okay, so he gets a ceramic plate, right, and he puts it back on top of the pile of the other plates and reaches instead for the brown paper bag of the takeaway variety, okay? <laughs> this is all happening live. <laughs> but now we're at loggerheads. We're in, un we're in international waters here emotionally <laughs> when it comes to the sauce. Because normally when I have the pie there, right, I just avail myself of the free in-house sauce bottle, okay? <laughs> Lower my overheads. <laughs> All right, it's a better margin when you have it in. <laughs> but I'm not having it in. So he goes, well, what about sauce? He goes, do you want any sauce? And I said to him, yeah, mate. I'll have a sauce. <laughs> There's no source where I'm going. <laughs> yep, red hot. <laughs> right? And he goes to me, he goes, he goes, well, where are you going? And I said, I'm going home. But I haven't got any source. <laughs> right? And we both had a big fucking laugh about that. <laughs> okay? Comedy is happening all the time. You just got to go and get it. Oh, man. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> um, oh, man. What else can I... What else can I tell you about? Oh, this always comes up in uh, comedy shows. And oh, this is no exception. Sorry, but... Oh, this is a clothes I wore, too. I didn't... I regret it, but... <laughs> I regret everything, you know what I mean? Like, it looks like I got out and I'm living on an island and... <laughs> They were like, you have to come back on stage. And I'm like, I'll never come back on stage. But you're the only one that can do it. <laughs> you know, so I'm, I'm back. But people talk about, when it, they always inf relate inf ugh, information about relationships. And, and this, sh this show tonight is no exception. You know, I've had a lot of relationships and, uh, you know, there's, I've figured it out how to make it work, have a successful relationship. And it doesn't matter what the dynamic is. You know what I mean? A man and a woman or two men, two women, or you know what I mean, if you've changed your mutt into a jut or whatever situation, any situation, any two people, 
together, right? Doesn't matter. This would be my advice for a successful relationship, right? N never, never commit. Okay, and all I mean by that is like, this is what I mean. Say your partner, what one day they'll say to you, they say, oh, can you, they go, oh, can you, can you pick me up from work? All right, the worst thing you can say, the, like the, the best thing you can say to that is you just say no. <laughs> I won't, I'm not picking you up. Get, go on about it, no, fuck that. You know, like, <laughs> be adamant, fuck, walk away. Shit like that, walk off. Don't even say anything, just no. <laughs> but then, right, when they're finished work, you're there out the front in the car, a surprise. <laughs> That's the best result you can get. That's the happiest your partner's gonna be from asking you that question. Okay, the second happiest they'll be if they ask you that question is like, oh, can you pick me up from work? And, then, and you just say, yeah, I'll pick you up from work. And then you pick them up from work. <laughs> Boring. Right? You're just meeting expectations. And if meeting expectations in a relationship is your thing, might I suggest you the third happiest you can make them is saying you're not going to pick them up from work and then not picking them up from work. <laughs> right? It's exactly the same as number two, so much easier. And then the worst thing, the worst thing you can do is say, yeah, I'll pick you up from work. And at the end of the day, you can't be fucked. <laughs> picking them up from work. So by saying a yes, you're risking a one and a three, right? The best result and not the worst for a two and a four. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Right, and if you follow these rules, right? You follow these rules, you'll find your partner all the time. They'll say to you stuff like, oh, you know what? You actually make me happier than I ever thought I even could have been. <laughs> while also never disappointing me as much as you look like you would. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I do, that's what, that's, that's, that'll be my advice. Um, oh man, the, um, oh okay, what about this? Um, what about this one? My only, my only drug dealer, is a friend, okay? Or, you know, it could be the other way around, but... <laughs> Thank you very much. But they're too... It's too serious. They're too serious about it. And they talk about crime all the time. Like, I don't think about crime. You know, I just get up. Like, <laughs> I just wake up. This guy's always talking to me about crime. To the end where he says to me the other day, this guy, he goes, he goes, oi, John, he goes, what do you reckon the, the perfect murder weapon is? Uh, and I had to answer honestly and say, I haven't really been thinking about it. <laughs> but he goes, no, what do you reckon it is? And I was like, I don't, I don't, I don't know, I said a gun. I just said a gun and he goes, no. I, I was wrong. He goes, he goes, the perfect murder weapon, right? It's a knife made out of ice so that after you kill someone, it melts and the evidence disappears. <laughs> and that's fucking crazy. <laughs> you know, I didn't really think about it like that. Like, I didn't anticipate the murder weapon going through three separate physical changes. And I'd argue, like, it's not even, how is that perfect? You know? Like, it's got to be cold and hard. You haven't got a lot of time. How do you do it? Oh, mate, can you come over and change the light bulb in the fridge? Like... <laughs> then the body's at your house, you know what I mean? Like... <laughs> or, or what do you do? Get an esky? Like, walk around, like, yeah, how you going? Like... Just don't kill anyone. You know what I mean? If you have a grievance or someone, get their phone, throw it in the river. Much rather be dead than try and verify my Apple ID, you know? 
that's all I'm, that's all I'm saying. Um, uh, but, you know, I, I, I have used the I have I have been able to use that information a little bit. I have been able to apply it to my normal life in a small way. And that is, like, I've got a quite a sweet tooth, you know what I mean? And, if you know, I do all comedy at night a lot. And so afterwards, if I go well, I get a, I go to get a treat. <laughs> you know? I'll get, I'll get a, I go to an ice cream shop. You know what I mean? And I decide if I've done well. You know, like... <laughs> That's my decision. <laughs> but always go, where they, you know, where they scoop it out and stuff, not the corner shop, I go to, a, I'll, I'll make the trip. And I never get it, I always get, a, I always get an ice cream, I get it in a cone. I don't get it in a tub like an idiot. <laughs> a little tub, take away, it's with a spoon, or whatever that is. <laughs> I, I get it in the cone, right? No serviette, clean licks. When I'm finished, I just keep fucking walking. <laughs> All right, that's the perfect crime. I don't stop. I click my heels as I finish it. You know what I mean, like that. I'm, I'm not one of these idiots next to the bin with a tub because they don't know what's going to happen in life. I move forward. I keep fucking going, they can't get me. Ah, uh, that's, that's, it is what it is. Um, and in terms of, uh, you know, bins and littering, I don't know if you've been keeping up with the littering laws, but um, in Australia they've updated them. It's, it's worth, it's like the road rules, it's worth keeping, keeping up to date with the littering rules. Because there's all kinds of, you know, things you might not know about. Like if you've got a tennis ball or whatever, you can just throw it anywhere. <laughs> it's, it's not rubbish. It's just a ball. You know what I mean? It's just ready for the next game, right? <laughs> they can't get you for that. They can never get you. You know what I mean? Just leave it there. Just do it in front of them. Just drop it like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Pitching me rolling, cunt. Like... <laughs> write it up, cos you're gonna have to pay it. It'd be embarrassing. You embarrass yourself and your council, right? Uh, but also, if you've got an old a packet of chips, or uh, yogurt, you know, lid off a of yogurt or something like that. And if you can manage to drive that between two wooden slats of a public picnic table, you're also fine. <laughs> you're in the clear. That's not littering, right? As long as it's flush with the surface level of the table. Okay, bring a spirit level. It's the same thing. They can't get you. Keep up to date with the littering laws. Um, that's all I'm saying. Um, I don't know about it. I know that, I, I, you know, because I remember, like, I never knew what I wanted to do when I grew up or whatever. And I remember when I was a little kid, I thought being a garbage man would be a real cool job because I thought you only had to work one night of the week. <laughs> I was like, Tuesday? I can do Tuesday. <laughs> right, what are you doing Wednesday? Let's do something. <laughs> just just got to be back by... Tuesday. <laughs> oh man, that's good. <sighs> what else? You hear some crazy things, travelling around and, and living your life. I remember, um, I like telling this story. I don't know if it would be good, but <laughs> I've always liked telling it, so I'm going to tell it. Uh, and I don't know if anyone here, does anyone remember when Red Rock Deli chips came out? <laughs> it was burnt, it was 2002. <laughs> I remember there was a big campaign. They were on bus shelters, on ads, everywhere, billboards, like Solo, like everywhere, right? <laughs> but they weren't on the shelf yet. There's a lot of hype. And then I remember the weekend they came out, the following Monday, going into work. And everyone was, was talking about their weekend. And uh, this is when I was an apprentice electrician. And if you ever, you know, I don't know if you worked in the trades, but or any job, there's a lot of talk about the weekend. And people are quite fond of this expression, how's your weekend? <laughs> And a common response you'll hear is, oh, too short. <laughs> a lot of people say that, too short. I've had a guy once, like on site, like, like I got his tape measure out, right, how's your week, like, and, and ran it out. 
the whole thing like that. And he goes, yep, too short. <laughs> right? Then let it come back in. <laughs> you know what I mean? The weekend's measured in metric. Um, everybody. But, yeah, when I was, so when I was an apprentice, yeah, this one guy, everyone was all too short, but one guy, one guy had a different answer. This tradesman was about 23 years old. I've never forgotten it. He's out of his time and he's sitting there and he goes, oh, the weekend, yeah. It's good. He goes, oh, yeah. He goes, there's a new chip in town. <laughs> I go, what are you talking about? And he goes, oh, there's a new chip in town. What? Red Rock Deli. So he said Red Rock Deli. And then he made probably the biggest proclamation I've ever made, ever heard a human being make. He goes, Kettle's dead. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, they're still, they're still around. Um, they're doing popcorn, they're doing it all. Like, I don't know if that's, I don't know what's happening with Kettle. I don't know how Kettle, you know, is related to making chips, like, but there you go. Oh, I was on the Gold Coast, speaking of, uh, maybe when was it? Two years ago, right? I, I, I like the Gold Coast quite a bit, and, um, but they, they, they live their own lives up there. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember one day, one day, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> couple of Gold Coast people. Um, but one day I'm walking to the shops, right, and I walk past these two council workers, they're doing a bit of council work, and they were, they were talking about the state of origin football in the New South Wales coast. And one of them just yells out, he goes, he goes, mate, right, he goes, Laurie Daly is doing fuck all. <laughs> he goes, Laurie Daly is doing fuck all. Okay, he's probably sitting up there having a cup of coffee and a packet of chips. <laughs> and I heard that and I thought to myself, who the fuck <laughs> has a cup of coffee <laughs> and a packet of chips? <laughs> I'd hardly call that doing fuck all. <laughs> Right, changing the course of human evolution in one sitting. Imagine your central nervous system. It's difficult. It's difficult to imagine that. <laughs> oh, man. Very good. Very good. It's going good. The term, I, I, I take... I've got a lot of issues, I admit, but... People talk, like, people sometimes say of other people as if it's complimentary. They go, oh, they've done so much, they've got a big heart. You ever heard of this? Oh, they've got a big, they've got a big heart. But that's wrong. If you've got a big heart and, and improved cardiovascular mechanics, I'd expect more of you. <laughs> you should be doing more. You should be helping fucking other people. <laughs> it's not complimentary at all. It should be the reverse, little heart. <laughs> yeah, they've got a fucking tiny heart and they still find the time to help people. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're heartless, they're borderline heartless, this individual. <laughs> That's what I think, just a little quick one. Um, <laughs> just a little quick thought. As we, uh, what do they call it? Land, go into landing or whatever. Put the tables up, we're bring it, bringing it home. Um, <laughs> I'd say, my favourite, favourite movie, did someone ask? <laughs> it's too easy, don't. But my favourite, I think it's important that you should have a favourite movie. I talk to a lot of crowds, a lot of people, and you go, some people, what's your favourite movie? And they just fucking have a, they don't, they're fat, you know, oh, <laughs> I don't know, like, oh, they can't. It's like, pick one to tell people, be interesting. And just screw up your face, like, you know, have a movie that, you know, that you want to talk about, that, that defines you. But my favourite movie, Cliffhanger. I don't know if anyone's seen Cliffhanger, this movie Cliffhanger, but sublime film, right? 
it's this movie, okay, it's called Cliffhanger, and the picture for it, right, it's just got a guy like that <laughs> hanging off a cliff. <laughs> okay, and you look at that and you just think, what's going to happen here? <laughs> It's my favourite movie. Um, oh, man. The government... Uh, <laughs> you heard. Canberra. You know, people say it's Canberra, like, oh, Canberra, but that's just, a, you know, there's normal people there too, but... The government's been looking into the banks. I don't know if anyone's taken any notice of this, but I... I was looking into it, the government, they're looking into the banks, and the first bank that I think is, needs to be investigated is St George Bank. I don't know if anyone here is with St George Bank, I'm with St George Bank, right, and I looked into the mythology of St George and why anything, why we even talk about St George. St George, oh, 300 years ago, whatever, he slayed a dragon, okay, but St George Bank, the dragon is fucking everywhere, right, it still exists. So what's St George done? You know what I mean? The dragon is breathing fire on the logo for St George. <laughs> if your enemy is dominating your signage... <laughs> you know what I mean? What are they going to do? Like, what has he done? Here's the dragon everywhere. That's, who, that's what we need to look into. <laughs> and I continue to report on it. Doesn't matter how lacklustre the response I get is because... <laughs> I don't think you understand. The dragon, he never killed the dragon. So how'd the bank even start? Like, what's happened there? Dragons everywhere. Um, I can tell you though, but, but you know, because of my lifestyle, um, I have been getting into a lot of conspiracy theories. Um, <laughs> Lately, but not, you know, not normal, not 9-11 or anything like that. That's, that's Westfield Food Court, right? <laughs> I've got my own conspiracy theories that I, I've been coming up with. Um, and do you guys, does everyone here want to know them? Yeah, yeah sick, finally. <laughs> so here we go, right? Conspiracy theories. Diet cordial. Why wouldn't you just put more water in normal cordial? <laughs> That's all I've got at the moment. Um, <laughs> oh, that's good. Um, Thanks very much to everybody for coming out, hearing this shit again. Um, some new ideas though, it's good, Shouldn't probably shouldn't say that on the recording. It's all new and uh, the response is genuine. Uh, we'll put, yeah, we might release this audio as like, I don't know, an album. That's what I want to do. What's that? Up the Shire. Up the Shire? Up the Shire, everybody. Um, <laughs> You know what I mean? It's better than the St George area. Fuck. That's what I'd say. Um, oh, man. I've, I've weaseled myself into a position in this life. I think now, uh, hopefully, you know, with any luck, because I was, I was an electrician before, I like, still got the licence, but I think, like, I'm out, I'm out. I think I'm retired from that. Hopefully, I'm out. <laughs> And it's just this from now on, just talking and thinking. It's fucking better. No, no, no. You don't clap. So I had this, this, the, I had, I used to work at the shopping centre point and I got this, the turning point for me, I got electrocuted on the fucking nose. And I don't know if you've ever been electrocuted off the mains before, but it's fucking not nice. And to get it on the nose, you've got to think about your life, right? Right on the fucking nose, like there, like just, oh, it's a little kiss, you know? So I was like, oh, I've got to, got to get funnier. Um, it motivated me. 
because I was just losing too many jobs just from lit B and May. I just want to be May. But I'd work all these jobs in the trades and I'd always, I'd always lose them. And I'd, the, the, I remember this one I lost not too long ago and I always lose the job the same way. You know, gradually, then suddenly. <laughs> And so I remember this one time I had this pretty sick job. I was working, uh, I was working at this place, right? It's called it's called the Strand Arcade in Sydney. There, down there in the city, and uh, it's an old it's an old building, and they turned it into this like boutique kind of shopping centre, you know. And um, I used to fix everything there. It was great. But one day, what happened was it rained very heavily, right? And all the water it pulled on the roof, okay? Because I hadn't done the gutters, you know. <laughs> but to be fair to me, it was raining, right? <laughs> So eventually what happened, it got so heavy and big that the, all the water it broke through the ceiling and it flooded one of the shops, right? And the, the shop that it flooded, it was called Alex Perry. Right? And Alex Perry, some people know, it's not, not just a shop. It's also a man. <laughs> okay. Very popular man in Australian fashion. I didn't know anything about it until this day. And he's so prominent in fashion, he's internationally known for his own style, this guy. Does anyone know what it is? Sunglass, correct. This is what Alex Perry, right? This is what he does. Famous around the world for fashion. He wears his sunglasses up here, right? <laughs> On top of his head. <laughs> yeah. He's figured out the true angle of the sun. <laughs> That's what it has to be. I can't figure it out, you know what I mean? Like, my blue-collar background can't get around it. Like, to me, that's just having a peripheral safety device <laughs> in a state of near deployment. OK? No different, no different than if I was up here with a necklace on that had a mouth guard on the end of it. <laughs> it's the same thing, right? Same ethos. Now, anyway... Alex Perry, right, he doesn't normally work in his own shops, but because of what happened, right, all the damage that got done to all this stock, all these wedding dresses and gowns, all covered in all this dirty water, all this water right from the roof. So he came in and I had to go and see him. And I, I kind of represented the disaster. <laughs> you know, so I went to see him and I can remember Alex Perry was furious. Right, like... <laughs> His glasses were fogging up. <laughs> even on top of his fucking head, right? And, <laughs> and norm, look, you've got to understand, everybody, normally in a confrontational situation, I'm, I'm chill song, right? I'm, I'm the minister of chill song, you know, <laughs> preaching it, right? You can see it, you can see it in me, but... You know, I don't, I don't like when fashion designers yell at me. <laughs> so he's giving, Alex Perry's just giving me this full on, what for? <laughs> right? So I, I said to him, I said, I said, look, mate, I empathise with your situation. Okay? And he goes to me, he goes, I don't want your fucking empathy. What the fuck do you think I should do about it? Right? I couldn't have that. <laughs> right. So I said to him, well, mate, I think you should start making swimwear. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody, for coming out. Really appreciate it. It was a good show. I'll see you later. I've got the next show here and uh, we'll do it again.